On this adventure with Little Mew, oh, end of Shakedown sale. We rectify the electrician's errors. You yes, sir, I'm dead set legend. We install new cushions, and Denise's services are harnesses. You can do it. eight days since we've been on board sailing or well, since we left Malaysia anyway and how's our shakedown cruise going what's working and what's not working Denise well after uh, I would say a solid month of repairing the boat every day for about eight hours pretty, sol a day. pretty solidly yep uh, so we're heading up to early overall that's where we're going but today we're going to Brampton Island a uh, little meant to be yeah, it was just a cheeky 16 nautical miles, little sail, just to make sure all the things we haven't tried yet, the sailing things, um, are working. And surprise, surprise, all the sailing things are actually working fine, having not been used at all or serviced or had anything done to them. However... Except for new rigging, and that's all going well. Sure, but that's not really a sailing The mast is still upright. I meant like the lines and the sails and the sheets and, sheets and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Uh, however, things that are not working today, a few little gremlins in the IT part of our world, uh, no depth. For some reason, the engines are charging our batteries, which they're not meant to be doing, um, because having, they don't have the right... Having spent a fortune bit on in between. upgrading our batteries, inverter and stuff like that, uh, the electrician was meant to install DC to DC chargers, because you need that when you've got lithium. Uh, and he didn't install them because he either ordered or received the wrong the wrong DC to DC items uh, and that's fine so he was going to disconnect the engines from the house batteries but he hasn't done that so although the engines are putting about a thousand watts call it 80 90 amps going into the batteries to stop that from happening at the moment <laughs> we're running the air conditioners it's basically counteracting that amount of power. Oh, and so then the port engine wasn't spitting out any water. Small problem. So Jamie's just changed the impeller. And now it seems happy. It was also smoking, but we may have overfilled the oil yesterday. So I don't think so. You don't I, reckon? No, I think it was smoking a bit. Or it was either smoke or steam. It was certainly white. And I think it was probably getting hot. But Not the, so hot that the temperature yeah. alarm's gone off. Assuming the temperature alarm's even working. It didn't seem that hot in there. But certainly there's water coming out now, the engine sounds a lot better, and there's no smoke or steam. No, no. So we are only doing about four knots. It's the two knots we were doing on one engine. The reason we're only doing four knots is because we are motoring against waves and wind, and, and we've current. got a current going uh, from the north as well. Our new roller furler, first time we've used it. We don't know if there's actually enough wind from the right angle. It's smooth so far. We'll see how it is when we try and roll it up. Well, end of Shakedown sale day. Uh, after three changes of destination, was actually going quite well once we got the engine um, back up running. Uh, we are going to pull into a southern anchorage of Thomas Island, one of the lower Whitsunday Islands. It should be very, very protected from the northwest to the northeast, which is pretty much what we've got. So we're halfway, halfway to Ely. How did the day finish up for you, Denise? Pretty good. Had a nap. Anchor went down well break anything sailing wise yeah pretty well nice little language actually tomorrow we are going to go to early beach so we can continue to fix the things on the boat and the additional things we found that are wrong with the boat so that should take us about six hours i reckon pretty similar to today <coughs> Yeah, 
now that the uh, snub is going through the thing properly, it doesn't reach that clean. You might need to go and drive the boat. minutes away from Port of Bailey Marina, Perth, and we have got a port engine who's not very happy, probably from a bit of crappy fuel and a dirty fuel filler, I think, so. Put him on idle, see if he comes good. Otherwise, we're driving in on one engine. Well, the engine started again and is running intermittently. So hopefully we'll just hang on for another half an hour just so we can actually pull in for a marina berth and once we're there I could um, place the, oil, the uh, fuel filters. Big day today, it's been a long time coming but we are replacing uh, inside cushions and our outside cushions but more importantly for someone like me uh, we're getting some shade cloth put in. There are our old cushions and you may think oh they look okay but on close appearance you know they're covered in mould and they're pretty worn out. We've had these for years and years and years. Uh, and in fact, the cushions, courtesy of Dave Boyle, we're actually putting back to front, back in Indonesia. So that, that wide section is actually meant to be at the bottom and vice versa, that was pointed out to us. To be fair to Dave Boyle, we didn't notice for a year. So Dave, you've done nothing wrong, mate. Ignore Jamie. Oh, no, he's a smart guy. He should have figured that out. Hanging outside, these blue ones and more importantly, this backrest that continually slides down all the time when you're sitting on it. What they're going to do is you're going to take this off, it's a little bit wider here, reverse it so we've got a bigger gap at the top, and then they're going to put a strip along like you would with a sail so it can't possibly move. So that will be pretty cool. And then this area around here will have shade cloth. Thing of beauty, new upholstery. <laughs> Have a look at that, fantastic. So the early sales, almond sales people have finished. We have new shade cloth, which looks beautiful. New cushions, new helm seat with a beautiful new track so that the damn thing doesn't slide down all the time. It's driving us crazy. And it's buttoned on now instead of Velcro. And this is buttoned on as well, instead of Velcro. So our goal with the shade was to block out the majority of the sun until the sun gets right down to literally setting, but also allow plenty of breeze through. And I think that's what we've achieved. We've got, um, got an electrician uh, to install our new batteries and our inverter uh, on the basis that paying a professional, they'd get it right. And the 240 side, I think is all perfect. And he's a lovely guy. But on the 12 volt side, uh, I've discovered um, after two days of him trying to problem solve why it wasn't working properly, uh, we've discovered what the problem is. And I've had it now confirmed by Dave, my, my uh, electrician solar expert um, from back home in Adelaide. And if we have a look down here, this thing here is called a shunt. And that's how the BMV can monitor and the color controller can see what's going in and out in terms of electricity. Now, for the battery here, you can see we've got the big 120 mil cable does not go through the shunt, it goes straight into the fuse box. And all negative has to go through the shunt first, which is not. And that's where we're getting uh, both wrong and, uh, uh, and inverted readings, etc. So what I'm going to do is I've got to remove this cable here. I'm going to run that from the other end of the batteries. I'll be running a cable from here through to the bottom of the chunt. Then what I'll do to neaten this up a bit, I'm going to use this blue cable that shouldn't be there to run off the top of the shunt to a little buzz bar, which I'll mount here. And that's where these three or four, if you can see those, 
uh, will then be able to come out of there. So if we do that, that should solve that problem. We've still got to deal with the DC to DC charges from the engine um, side of things, but this will be a major step forward if I can get this done. So here I go. All right, I've rewired it as we've been advised to by the uh, solar expert in Adelaide. So we now have a negative coming from here, going to the shunt. We then have everything coming off the other side of the shunt, partly through a, a small buzz bar, the other part, obviously the 120 mil into the fuse box there. Um, it doesn't look pretty because I don't have long enough cable to make it look prettier, but um, it's an improvement. The shunt, which is this guy here, was actually, the polarity was the wrong way around, so he had it inverted. So we've corrected that. Now it's just a matter of turning everything else back on. So what we should be seeing, which we are, PV, so that's the solar going in, 214 watts. DC power coming out, that's correct, about 190, call it 200 watts. Denise, can you just plug in the shore power? Now what we should see. Yeah. Yep, so it's flicked over to bulk. Do you want to put an air conditioner on, darling, so we can see what, the, what happens under load? Now the load comes up as the compressor kicks in. You, sir, are a dead set legend. Thanks, baby. I didn't do anything, I don't know why you're giving me half up. We need to change the switch position <coughs> on the uh, blue solar charge controller, the MPPT, to tell it that these are now lithium batteries. According to the manual, when we've got it set correctly, all three lights will blink slowly. That's slow. And is that pointing yep. towards level seven? It is. Just um, show the torch on it see what you think. Is that seven? That's a seven. All right. We are replacing our depth gauge. So Detective, Denise. Detective Denise has been hard at work. Denise has threaded through the cable that goes through to where the sea talk, uh, which is the, the method that um, Ray Marine use for connecting all their various items of equipment. And now I need to pull that out and put this in as quickly as possible because the boat's in the water. Coming in already. Go, do it. Commit. Meeting. Jesus. Just a teaspoon, Johnny. Just a teaspoon. <laughs> Big test is, do we read a depth gauge? Do we have depth on our depth gauge? So this took about hour, two hours of research this morning, trying to plug everything into everything to see if it would work. <laughs> I'm a genius. Look at this. 6.5 baby works so what I did was I plugged the new depth gauge into the back of the actual uh, Ray Marine thing to see if it would work there which it did and then I plugged into the back of the air conditioning unit where there's some other cables and Jamie I can tell you it's 6.5 meters where we are now Woohoo! depth gauge tick I have been doing the self test on our life jackets they're out there and it requires a whole lot of stuff to be done to them, including taking off the sensors, unscrewing the canisters and auto inflate them. Uh, and then it says to check the oral inflator, that's this thing here, which I've done. Check that, hold on, by correctly blowing something in, then inverting the cap in the oral tube to release the valve. Oh, I've just figured out how to do it, I'm an idiot. Anyway. It's, you it, couldn't work out how to get the air out. Weird. It says you had to blow it up and leave it out overnight. But there's no deflate valve on there at all. But anyway, I've just... Careful reading would show that it actually does say how to deflate it. So now I know. Anyway, they're done and they're safe. This has been inflated overnight, as per the instructions. Um, so, I just need to... Such a simple way of deflating this. Interesting maneuver. Yeah, you can do it. Sorry, one more time. You can do it. Coming up for air? Yep. Still not all the air out. I'm replacing the auto inflate. So this currently has got two red, two red markings there. Green, 2024. Green. 
Alrighty. Now to fold. Jamie up the sail mast the other day I saw that the rope uh, is really badly frayed and it holds up both our mast and my husband which is quite important to me which so rope? which rope the main halyard is its proper name because the halyard is a rope that lifts things up apparently I don't know anyway so I'm gonna sew these ends together really really well and then tape the crap out of them and then we're going to try and reverse thread it through. It's actually quite tricky because this is the rope that Jamie's normally on when he goes up the mast. So, yeah. We'll see if it works or not. All right, so the next stage of replacing the main halyard is we need to pull it up the mast, back down, and then I'm going to tie on. I'm going to pull through about 15 metres, which is about the height of the mast. I'll go up the top tie it off, untie the old one, come on down, and we're done. Now what we want to see is the black tape, and here it comes down. What's up? Buttercup? Uh, these edgings obviously is not doing business, so we're going to replace them just with some aluminium to try and cover up what looks otherwise a bit dodgy. And was this part of the great cracking of 2018? We think so. So this is the flexing I'm concerned about. Now this is all opened up in the last 24 hours. This crack has also appeared. It wasn't there before. We have found the culprit. But why is the question? A bit concerned to say the least that uh, whether this is structural or just superficial. So, all done. A little bit neater and tidier. Much neater. Could do with a wipe over, but yeah. Both oh, yeah, sides. That's all right. It's excellent, Jamie. Well done. We're going to attempt to install our DC to DC chargers. I've got all the bits and pieces we need. So, we need to do away with the relays. And the relays. Uh, are what um, basically tell the electricity to charge the starting batteries when the engines are running first and then goes to the house battery. Honestly, you could just say blah, 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 blah. So we're going to get the magic out of the engines and we're going to put the magic stuff through this into those things. Much better explanation. All right, so we've now installed our second DC to DC charger. We have updated the firmware. We have set all the same segments that we have on the port engine. We've started the engine, which you can hear running, and it seems to be working beautifully. Who needs to see us some professionals in? We should just do this stuff all by ourselves on a regular basis. I'm uninstalling a shelf, which I'll hand you the screws for, to get access to our fuel tank, which we're going to attempt to uninstall to get rid of our problem of crappy fuel. <laughs> so we've got this ongoing problem of what we think is, is uh, a combination of dead diesel bug and just contaminants that have built up in the tank over really the last 10, 11 years. And the problem is as soon as we go through rough water, it stirs up the bottom composition of the fuel tank which means you suck it up, it then blocks the fuel filters and your engines stop working. I'm in our berth and that I'm nearly on is one of the two fuel tanks and the return is in there. So I will need to somehow get in to uninstall that. But first things first, we need to take the little sender unit out which tells you how much fuel you've got in your tank. This guy here, take that out and then manually pump out the remaining fuel which we think is about 70 or 80 litres into jerry cans to get this basically as completely empty as possible. So that is the 
fuel gauge, which doesn't really work in the corner. Covered in sludge. That is the hole. Here is the tank. Here's the transfer pump. Here's the transfer pump, and look at us make a mess. Okay. So we're currently scraping the bottom of the tank with thingies. And this is what we're getting out. Can you see that sludge? Have a look at that. We have now cleaned out both fuel tanks to the best of our ability. We are replacing the water traps uh, with these guys. Your fuel filter sits there and because it's got a glass bowl you can see if there's any water or contaminants in there. And priming has been an absolute nightmare. So the little mechanical pump on the side of the engine, you've got to press this little tiny lever about 10 million times to try and pull the fuel back up and through. So we're going to install one of these. You see them on outboard motors. They've got a non-return valve in them. The volume's quite large, and it was actually a tip I got from a guy over there who's got an MED1 qualification, as well as being a Master 4. And he said, putting these in line makes a big difference. So we're going to try that today and see if that makes priming easier, which would then make changing fuel filters in the future a lot easier. Welcome to my engine bay. I have installed this little, it's hard to see, isn't it? This little inline hand pump, much like you'd see on an outboard motor. So the priming now is really easy because this is the little lever and that's the extent of what you have to do. And you essentially have to do that about 10,000 times to get the fuel up primed. These are the little, this is the little bleeder valve. So when it stops bubbling, you get pure fuel out of that. Then of course all the air's out of that. And then on your fine filter, which is this guy here, in here, and the same thing, you gotta bleed it until the bubbles are gone, getting pure fuel, which I've done. So hopefully now, the engine will run. Denise, can we please try the port engine? See if it goes. The next question, will we keep running for a while? So, here we go. Ready, rock and roll? Only if you're finally ready, sir. Not be so condescending. <laughs> no, that's sarcasm, it's different. Come on, start some engines. That's not a good start. I think the reason that's just turned off, that's the battery alarm, is because the starter battery is so low, now it's got some power coming into it from the alternator. We think it's going to be a bit happier, but when the revs drop in a moment, we're going to go into neutral, it's probably going to do it again. Ready? Yep. Having been working on the boat in a marina berth for way too long, it was time to get out and explore the Whitsundays. We made it to Stone... Stonehaven? Stonehaven, Anchorage. Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> he saw us and bolted. That's what happens when you scare the shit out of a turtle. What's he doing? Making the big fish come up. Then there's a large flat washer. Basket thing, for want of a better descriptor. Okay, part a seven, plastic. six, eight. <laughs> okay, a plastic washery type thing. Bit yep, flatter. yep. And then another basket. What well, you're calling a basket? They're like, they're like, you know, things around. They look like a basket with no bottom. <laughs> but they're like a bunch of flat, ramble bearings, like this. All right. Well, I can, they're they're, they're going to be our baskets, are they? 
you, what would you like to call them? I don't know. What to, I don't know what else to call them. Basket. seeing anything different and I put them back on on the order I pulled them off and oh, it's the same order unless there was just something slightly Have off. those springs perhaps lost some tension? No, they're perfect. Yeah, they're perfect. Pull springs? Pull springs. All right, backwards. There we go. Part two seven eight two Ooh. eight Dash. is it? Dash Can be put in the wrong way and cause you a problem. Who knew? We have now reassembled it for the third time. Uh, and my beautiful assistant um, noticed that you can put one of the cogs in the other way, which I hadn't noticed. So solve and brakes very nicely. It's all good, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. On the next adventure with Look at Mew, we leave our boat jobs behind and venture to the outer Great Barrier Reef for some much needed R&R &R to be greeted by some locals. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with your friends.